موسیقی مولایا صلی و سلم دائما ابدا على حبیبی کا خیر الخلقی کلی ہمی Most honorable viewers and listeners of Vuk's درس قرآن I welcome you with the Islamic greetings of السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ انشاءاللہ تعالی In today's iftar transmission we will be learning about many verses from the third juz The Jews which begins with تِلْكَ غُسُولُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْدَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions here that of these rusul, meaning the messengers of Allah, He has bestowed excellence to some over others. And we believe that as far as the nubuwa, prophethood is concerned, all of the prophets of Allah, are equal in terms of nubuwa but in status in honor in prestige in greatness some have been tafdeel some have been bestowed with tafdeel excellence over others note that allah azza wa jal does not say that some are some are less in importance than others as this is tanqis of the anbiya and tanqis lessening the importance or using derogatory terms for the prophets of allah is an act which nullifies one's belief. So we must be very careful when we are addressing the Anbiya'i Kiram alayhim salam So some have been given excellence over others. And minhum man kallam Allahu wa raf... Minhum man kallam Allahu wa rafa'a ba'dahum darajat. Of them are uh, some with whom Allah has conversed. The Mufassir will mention this is indicating towards Sayyiduna Musa Kalimullah alayhi salam And there are some who have been raised by many darajat, by many levels. And here the indication is towards Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which reminds me of a hadith in which it is mentioned, our Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, the leader of the prophets and messengers of Allah, Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen. The coolness of our eyes, of our mind, of our hearts, of our soul. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most honorable from the beginning of creation to the last of creation, the reason of all of creation. He says that khamsa, the best from the children of Adam are five. And then he mentions Ibrahim wa Musa, Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa wa Nuh wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And alayhi salam. Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Nuh, and Muhammad. These are the best from the children of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. And then he says, Wa khayruhum Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And the best of them, meaning the best of the best, is Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. In this surah, we also conclude Surah Al Baqarah and we begin the recitation of Surah Ali Imran. There is an ayah. A verse which is known as the Ayah of the Throne, Ayatul Kursi, which talks about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> it also talks about the intercession the Ahlullah have been given with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. That they will have the power to intercede in the court of Allah with the izan of Allah, with the permission of Allah. Azza wa Jal, the Anbiya and Awliya Allah, they will be bestowed with this honor, with this excellence. This surah, if it is recited, the Mufassirul mentioned, uh, then it serves to, with the wasila of this surah, through the means of this surah, one's life 
and one's wealth becomes in the aman, in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If one recites, uh, recites uh, Ayatul Kursi after Salah, then this will be a means of, for him to attain paradise. And if he recites it when he is retiring to bed, then he will be in the protection of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions the importance of spending in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. The benefits and virtues of doing that. The argument between Sayyiduna Ibrahim salam and Namrud, uh, who was a great kafir, a rejecter of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he was um, defeated and humiliated by the special devotee of Allah, Sayyiduna Ibrahim salam when uh, Allah begins with these words in his kalam alam tara ila alladhi hajja ibrahim fi rabbihi an ataahu Allah al-mulk idh qala ibrahim rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit qala ana uhyi uhyi wa umit qala ibrahim fa inna Allah ya'ti bi shamsi min al-mashriqi fa'ti biha min al-maghribi fa buhita alladhi kafar but O oh, beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so whenever Alam Tara is mentioned, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to the Prophet that, O oh, beloved, did you not see? And we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not physically present there. But the Mufassirun have mentioned that how we normally say to someone, did you not see when such an occurrence happened, when such an event happened, when such a predicament occurred? Why do we say that? We only say that to remind someone who has previously seen it. So Allah Azza wa Jal, when he's revealing the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Mufassir will mention that he is reminding Sayyiduna Rasulullah, his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, oh beloved, did you not see? Which means that there are two explanations to this, the Mufassirun say, the commentators of the Quran, that the Allah Azza wa Jal has shown, he has revealed everything of the past and the future of ma kana wa ma yakun to his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, it may mean that with the nur of Nubuwa, because the first of all creation, awwalu ma khalaqallahu nuri, as the Prophet وسلم, says that the first thing that Allah created was my light, was my nur. So with the nur of his Nubuwa, his Nubuwat meaning was before his Bashariyat. He says, Kuntu nabiyyum wa adamu al ma'i wa teen, that I was a Nabi, when Adam, Adam alayhi salam was between ma and teen, between water and clay. So our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was even a Nabi then. When Adam alayhi salam was between ruh and jasad, between soul and body. So, through the nur of Nubuwat, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shown everything. This is how Allah is reminding him that, do you recall? Do you not see? So this explains why Allah is saying that. But Alam Tara Ida Ladi Haja Ibrahima fi Rabbihi that did you not see the one who quarreled with Ibrahim concerning his Lord? Merely because Allah had given him kingdom and Atahullahul Mulk. The Quran says when Ibrahim salam said, My Rabb is the one who gives life and who gives death. What did Namrud say? He said, Ana Uhi wa umid. I also or the one who gives life and causes death. Ibrahim salam said, Surely Allah brings up the sun from the east, you cause it to rise from the west. Thereupon the infidel was rendered babhut, meaning he was confounded. He was gobsmacked, he was silenced. And Allah does not guide the unjust people. We also learn about Sayyiduna Ibrahim salam. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he gives life to the death. So there is a verse which explains this also. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Ibrahim alayhi salam that take four birds, then make them become familiar to you. Then put a part of each of them, meaning after you have chopped them up, mix their flesh then put a part of each of each of them on different hilltops 
which means obviously after they've been chopped up, their meat has been mixed. They are all different birds, different species of birds. After their meat has been mixed, put them on different hilltops and then call them. Thereafter, call them. They will come to you in haste and this is exactly what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows, not that Ibrahim alayhi salam did not believe in life after death, that Allah is able to give life to those who have become dead, no. But for it minane qalb, walakin liyatuma inna qalbi, this is why he asked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in many verses in Al Juz of Thalis, in this third Juz, about the virtues of spending in his path. And he says that the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like that of a grain of wheat. Which grows into seven offshoots or seven ears. Each offshoot contains 100 grains. So one offshoot grows into seven offshoots and each offshoot contains 100 grains. So from one, we have 700. Imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the reward of the good doers. This is why Allah says elsewhere in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Surely Allah is the one who loves the ones who do good. May Allah give us the tawfiq to do good in his path. And not just that, he doesn't stop there. The Quran says, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. And Allah increases for whomsoever he wills. Meaning for him to increase the reward, it is not a problem. He is the owner of the treasures. And he increases the reward for whomsoever he wills, meaning subject to our sincerity. The more ikhlas we have in our actions, the more lillahiyat we have, the more we do it for Allah, the greater the reward will be as he is the all-encompassing, the all-knowing. Wallahu wasi'un alim. And we are encouraged to speak good in the path of Allah. That qawlu ma'rufun wa maghfiratun khayrun min sadaqa. Meaning to speak kind words and to forgive is better than charity, which is followed by injury. Yatba'u'a adha. So, qawlu ma'rufu wa maghfiratun khayru min sadaqa. It is better than that charity which, after which follows injury. And the, we are encouraged to spend in many verses, in uh, these verses of the Quran, and warned of the tricks and the traps of the devil. As who is the devil? The Quran warns us once again and says, "A shaitan." We are repeatedly warned throughout the Quran of our uh, open enemy, our greatest enemy, our ultimate enemy, whom we so easily become a victim to and begin to follow. Allah Azza wa wants to protect us from the uh, curse of the devil, from following the footsteps of the devil. He says, "A shaitan yaidukumul fakra wa yamurukum bil fasha." Which means that the devil threatens you with poverty and commands you of lewdness. And Allah promises you forgiveness from it and bounty. So we should follow the advice given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not um, hold back, especially when it comes to the month of Ramadan. As we are in the month of Ramadan, we should take advantage where normally giving one pound it mentions it is equal to uh, 700 so imagine when that is multiplied 70 fold in the month of ramadan every virtue every action every good action that you do whether it is a verbal form of worship whether it is a physical form of worship whether it is a financial form of worship as when you are giving zakat or when you are giving uh, nafli sadaqa, optional charity, then this is the time to give that. But my advice to you is only give it to those charities who promise a hundred, who have a hundred percent donation policy. Give it to them. They will not be filling, filling their pockets and looking for loopholes to uh, appoint thousands 
and 50, 60 thousands, uh, thousands of pounds for themselves in, where, where we have many charities that do that. Under the guise of charity, they are filling their pockets and their bank balances for which undoubtedly they will be held to account. You can get away with it here, but in the court of Allah, this is impermissible and it is haram. So we should take advantage of the month of Ramadan and donate generously to the needy and poor in this month as we have been encouraged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the Quran of Majid repeatedly, especially in the third juz. There are all, also uh, verses which talk about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although this is mentioned throughout the Quran as it is the kalam of Allah, it is the most unique kalam there is no other kalam like the Quran. Allah Azza wa reminds us time and time again that everything belongs to Allah. Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. That everything that is in the heavens and in the earth, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum aw tukhfuhu yuhasibkum bihillah. Whatever you show, what is in within your hearts or whatever you conceal. Allah will bring you to account for it, meaning we will be held to account whether we do something openly or secretly. Yuhasibkum Allah. He is the one who will do our muhasaba. And He will forgive. فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He is the one who forgives whomsoever He wishes, but He does not forgive kufr and shirk. And He will punish whomsoever he wishes and he is over everything that he desires. He is, he has a power. Allahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. He has power to do over everything that he wishes. In Surah Ali Imran, we learn further about the uh, greatness of the Quran of Majid. We learn about there are many verses we talk about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is no one worthy of worship except Him and He is al Hay and He is al Qayyum, the everlasting and He is the sustainer of others and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He warns people who reject the Quran of Majid who reject the verses of the Quran that for them awaits a severe punishment Adabun Shadid and where people talk about Allah being Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, yes, these are genuine qualities and attributes of Allah which we have Iman in, unshakable and profound conviction in all of his attributes in his entity. But at the same time, we believe in those attributes of Allah that He is the Lord of retribution, the one who punishes Allah Azizun Dhum Tiqam the most powerful. And there is nothing hidden from him. He reminds us, لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء That there is nothing hidden from Allah, whether it is in the heavens or in the earth. And he is the one who creates in the wombs of the mothers. And then there are many verses which talk about, which remind us of du'as that we should be reciting in our daily lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the uh, favors and blessings that he has bestowed upon us in this world. The blessings of uh, having wife, uh, wives, children and of gold and silver of the riches of this world. But he reminds us that these are the provisions of the worldly life. ذَلِكَ مَتَاقُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya, And as far as Importance is concerned that Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab and it is Allah with whom is the best abode. And what is the best abode? The best abode, respectable viewers and listeners, is paradise for which you and I should be ultimately striving for, not for the worldly riches in this dunya. We will be leaving this, the, the worldly riches behind. Look at the examples of Fir'aun, Pharaoh, Qarun, of Haman. Of all the previous kings and people today, they employ uh, corruption in order to have excessive bank balances and properties, all of which are going to be left behind. 
are going to be distributed to their uh, to their heirs, and they are haram. They are haram. They are consuming uh, that. They are consuming haram and leaving that as a legacy for their uh, coming generations, <coughs> which is nothing but haram. And what are we going to take with us? It's all about what you take into the akhirah, which are your good deeds. And by uh, earning haram is not certainly going to be uh, constructive towards good deeds. In fact, this is destructive uh, towards our good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminds us of the greatness of the akhirah that better than the luxuries and better than this material, materialistic world. In fact, one cannot even compare it to uh, the gifts and the rewards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us in the akhirah, uh, which is Jannah. And he describes in detail what the uh, luxuries of paradise uh, have for us. He mentions about um, his own qualities and that the witness that there is no one, Allah testifies, meaning Allah Himself testifies that there is no, there is no one worthy of worship except Him. Shahid Allah anna la ilaha illahu. And then He says that the angels also testify. And then He mentions the virtues of His, of those of His devotees, those of His servants, whom He has blessed with the greatest treasure, and that is the treasure of ilm, the ilm of Deen, who are the ulama haq. That they also testify that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the subsequent verse, he reminds us that the only deen which is truthful in his court is, is the deen of Islam. Meaning that that is the only deen which is going to be accepted. All the previous adhyan are no longer uh, <clears throat> worthy of acceptance in his court. He, does, he will not accept them. And this is mentioned in the... Um, Final verses of the third Jews that Wamay Yaptagi Ghaira al Islami Deenan Falay Yukbala Minhu that whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, then Falay Yukbala Minhu, it will never be accepted from him. Wahuwa fil Akhirati Minal Khasirin and he in the Akhirah will be among the losers. So until a person does not accept wholly the deen of Islam, yes, if a person was previously of the Ahli Kitab. And then he now accepts Islam as his deen or her deen. Then the virtue of previously being an ex ahli kitab, which was the original uh, book which wasn't changed, will also be a quality and uh, a means of reward for that person. But a person who has not accepted Islam and being an ahli kitab simply means that he is from ahli kufr. So the deen only, only the only deen, the exclusive deen with Allah is the deen of Islam. This is what Allah reminds us. Inna deena indallahi islam <coughs> That is the only deen which is acceptable in his court. That is the only deen which is uh, truthful. So this is what we are reminded of. So a person must believe in uh, that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the final messenger of Allah. We also learn about <coughs> the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one who <coughs> grants people with honor, with izza, with kingdom and who removes that kingdom. He takes that away. And he is the one who brings us honor. Wa tu'izzu man tasha'u wa tu'zillu man tasha'u That he is the one who gives honor to whomsoever he wishes. And he is the one who will bring humiliation to whoever he wishes. And all the goodness in is in is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi yadika al-khayr innaka ala kulli shay'in qadeer. And he is surely upon everything most powerful. And he is the one who controls the, the night and the day and who brings forth the living from the dead. 
and the dead from the living and he is the one who gives us sustenance we are reminded of these things and then there were people who claimed to love Allah but they did not truly love Allah they were showing their love in different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no this is not your way to show that you love Allah if you truly love Allah then he says to his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa then oh beloved declare قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ That <coughs> if you really claim to love Allah, then follow my footsteps. Allah is saying that, meaning your love, the genuineness of your love, the truthfulness of your love is subject to you following the footsteps, the ways, the sacred ways of my beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says to him, if you claim to love Allah, then follow me. Meaning our Nabi says, follow me. What will happen then? Then your claim is on one side. I will love you. Yuhbibkumullah. Meaning if you follow the footsteps of my beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then what will be the result of that? You will become the beloved of Allah. Imagine, you know, people today, they become... <clears throat> amazed and they treasure the love of worldly leaders they treasure the uh, love of people who are in power who have wealth and money or a person who may be a leader in a community this love cannot even be compared with the love of the one who is Rabbul Alameen the love of the one who is our sustainer our ultimate owner our Khalik our Malik our Razik, the one who has bestowed us with this life and with all the goodnesses that you enjoy in this life, who gave you the ultimate treasure of Iman and the ability to do good, you will become his beloved, not the leader of a, of a country, of a community, of a nation, or of even the world. He is the Khalik of the world, the creator of the universe. The Lord of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will become his beloved. Yuhbibkumullah. How will you achieve this? By following the footsteps of the leader of the messengers of Allah, the leader of the prophets of Allah. If you follow his footsteps, you do his ittiba with profound reverence in your heart. You must follow him with having the most profound reverence for him. Taveem for the Prophet, Takreem for the Prophet, in conjunction with his love, the same kind of love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is profound in reverence. Love which is profound in reverence, in Taveem and Takreem for him, and then you follow his footsteps. You will become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not just that, he will forgive you. He will forgive you your sins. This is mentioned in this verse that do not search for other ways and do not demonstrate your love for the for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other ways because if you want to show that you really love him then follow the footsteps of my beloved Sayyiduna Zakariya alayhi salam and him visiting the mihrab of uh, Hazrat Maryam and making dua there and showing that his dua is accepted at the uh, threshold at the place where the awliya Allah, where the saints of Allah are present. These verses are also mentioned and the verses which talk about the discussion of Sayyiduna uh, Isa alayhi salam that he is a servant of Allah and that he is not the son of God. This is refuted in verses in this um, juz, in the third juz. That in the masala Isa in the Allahi kamathali Adam. That the example of Isa in the court of Allah is like the example of Adam. Ali Salam. Khalakahu min turabin. Thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. That he created him from clay. And then he simply said, Be. Then he was done. Fayakun. Meaning that he is not the son of God. Because he was miraculously created without <coughs> having a father, without any male intervention Allah directly created him and how did he create him by saying kun be then he was done so this and then the mubahala the challenge that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made against the priests of najran is also mentioned in the third juz that 
they refused to <coughs> consider and accept the mubahla, the challenge in which the curse of Allah would, uh, the, the wrath of Allah would strike those who were upon falsehood. They realized the priests, the uh, Christian priests that, that these people, the Prophet وسلم, together with his Ahl Bayt, who was Sayyiduna Ali, Sayyiduna Fatima, and Sayyiduna Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that these people are the people of truthfulness. They are the true devotees of Allah. And if we accept this debate with them, in which they are calling up, uh, that, that the wrath of Allah strikes the one who is upon falsehood, then we will be destroyed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, uh, in his words, that then the curse of Allah will be upon those who are the liars. Also, um, <clears throat> The greatness of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the mithaq, the covenant which was took uh, in the presence of all of the anbiya kiram, is also mentioned in the concluded, concluding verses of the third juz, as well as uh, the verse of the Quran Majid, which reminds us that anyone who seeks a religion other than Allah, then that will be never accepted from him in the court of Allah. And he will be amongst the losers in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast upon Islam. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for watching the books, Darsi Quran. Inshallah, I will be with you uh, tomorrow, in tomorrow's, during tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's iftar transmission. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Rahman, Rahim.